Hello my friends. This time we are dealing with a rotating wheel of a bicycle that is supposed to run continuously with repelling magnetic force. As always, I demonstrate the basics of operation with my magnetism to gravity transfer. You will see that even the starting point is not suitable for acceleration and even if you adjust the structure so that acceleration can take place, even then no permanent movement will be possible. But see for yourself. I was inspired by a comment on my videos by YouTuber James Rooney Status, who has already built some of these devices. How exactly is that supposed to work now? As you can see, magnets have been placed evenly spaced on the outer edge of the rim of a bicycle tire. The bicycle tire itself is mounted horizontally on its central suspension though that it can rotate freely. So that the bicycle tire can rotate almost completely without friction. The magnets on the bicycle tire are all have the same magnetic orientation here. In example the north pole is pointing up and the south pole is pointing down. The round and square magnets are oriented identically and stick together using their own magnetism. The magnetic force possessed by the individual magnets on the bicycle tire can be assumed to be identical because they appear to come from the same manufacturer. The fact that the magnets cling to the bicycle tire with their own magnetic attraction has no negative effect here. The principle is intended to create continuous motion by means of magnetic repulsion once a stator that creates a repulsion has been introduced. There is a statically installed magnet on the side of the bicycle tire whose magnetic field extends to the magnetic field of the magnets on the bicycle tire. The magnetic influence of the static magnet causes the bicycle tire to rotate. The rotation of the bicycle tire shifts the sphere of influence of the magnetic repulsion of the static magnet, though that it enters the magnetic field of the nearest magnet on the bicycle tire due to this repulsive force. Because also here an imbalance is to be expected, this movement repeats itself and a continuous acceleration takes place. Sounds great! As announced, I would like to convert the magnetic model into a gravitational model in order to make the effects of magnetism visible. To do this, we take the magnets off the bicycle tire and expand the arc shape in which they are located into a straight line. When we do this, something like a magnetic ramp is created, looking similar to the simple magnetic over unity toy. In my videos, I usually make the invisible magnetic field visible by representing the magnetic attraction as a deepening and magnetic repulsion as a hill. The stronger the magnetic force, the greater the impact. Here I neglect the direction and the number of magnetic fields and only consider the force effect between the participants. If the magnetic field is actively influenced by external forces, for example the magnetic ball is pushed out of the field, then this also influences the marble ball. It rises. If several magnets complement each other, then the hollow becomes deeper, as can be seen in the example with the magnetic ramp. And now we transfer the gravity model to the magnetic ramp. When we build a magnetic ramp, we use the increasing magnetic attraction of the ramp's magnets, which increases with either its strength or its proximity. This is shown by the deep hollow of the lower ramp, which is a result of the increasing magnetic attraction on the upper ramp. But for our bike tire, 
we use repulsive magnetic force. So we need to use hills to move the marble ball. Let's see if the setup is suitable for moving the marble ball using the repelling force of magnets on the bike tire. So let's transfer the magnetic effect of the magnets on the bicycle tire to the gravitational model. For this, we indicate the polarity using the colors red and blue. In fact, when the magnet of the stator is brought into the magnetic field of one of the magnets on the bike tire, the tire moves slightly. And when the bicycle tire is pushed, here with a small stick, it runs for a while. But it is clear to see that no permanent movement will result from the construction of this magnetic structure. The reason is a symmetry. There is no permanent imbalance. Now let's imagine that the magnets, also they look the same, have different increasing magnetic powers. I'll show this here as growing round magneta. If the movement starts at the highest magnetic repulsion, then the system tries to get to a lower magnetic repulsion and the movement starts. Unfortunately, it is clear to see that this will not be permanent, since a transition from the lowest repulsion back to the highest repulsion will only be possible with additional energy that would have to be added into the system. So, the movement stops. What do we learn from this? It is clear that a permanent movement can only take place if the system that is supposed to carry out this movement is in a permanent imbalance. A permanent imbalance is possible if, in our gravitational model, the marble ball would always move downhill, even using a ring of magnets that is closed and would allow infinite movement it is not possible to create a permanent imbalance without changing the system, changing by adding energy. If no external force were driving the bicycle tire, then the stator would stop at the point of least magnetic repulsion between the magnets of the bicycle tire. I hope I was able to shed some light on the magical world of perpetual magnet motors. If you liked the video, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel if you dare. Thanks for watching, have fun!